down and see that button is turned red. So now to stop the stream, you just go back to that red button. All
morning and welcome everyone. Welcome to those who are at home. My lapel mic is not working, so I am using the pulpit mic. So bear with me, I'll try to make myself heard from the altar. Blessed be the one holy and living God. Glory, Glory to God, God forever and ever. I'm going to invite you to say the collective purity with me. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord be with you. Let us pray together. Almighty and merciful God, it is only by your gift that your faithful people offer you true and laudable service. Grant that we may run without stumbling to obtain your heavenly promises through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Habakkuk. The oracle that the prophet Habakkuk saw, O oh Lord, how long shall I cry for help and you will not listen? Or cry to you violence and you will not save? Why do you make me see wrongdoing and look at trouble? Destruction and violence are before me. Strife and contention arise. So the law becomes slack and justice never prevails. 
The wicked surround the righteous. Therefore, judgment comes forth perverted. I will stand at my watch post and station myself on the rampart. I will keep watch to see what he will say to me and what he will answer concerning my complaint. Then the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision. Make it plain on tablets so that a runner may read it. For there is still a vision for the appointed time. It speaks of the end and does not lie. If it seems to tarry, wait for it. It will surely come. It will not delay. Look at the proud. Their spirit is not right in them, but the righteous live by their faith. The word of the Lord. Now let's read responsively Psalm 119. You are righteous, O God, and upright are your judgments. You have issued your decrees with justice and in perfect faithfulness. My indignation has consumed me because my enemies forget your words. Your word has been tested to the uttermost and your servant holds it dear I am small and of little account, yet I do not forget your commandments. Your justice is an everlasting justice, and your law is the truth. Trouble and distress have come upon me, yet your commandments are my delight. The righteous of your degrees is everlasting. Grant me understanding that I may live. reading from the second letter of Paul to the Thessalonians. Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy, to the church of the Thessalonians in God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We must always give thanks to God for you, brothers and sisters, as is right, because your faith is growing abundantly and the love of every one of you for one another is increasing. Therefore, we ourselves boast of you among the churches of God for your steadfastness and faith during all your persecutions and the afflictions that you are enduring. To this end, we always pray for you, asking that our God will make you worthy of his call and will fulfill by his power every good resolve and work of faith so that the name of our Lord Jesus may be glorified in you and you in him, according to the grace of our God and the Lord Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord.
In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. So there's a children's song about Zacchaeus, and you may know it, you may have known, grown up knowing it. Here are the words, I'm not gonna sing it, because as I said at the nine o'clock service, you would not want me to sing it. Zacchaeus was a wee little man, and a wee little man was he. He climbed up in a sycamore tree for the Lord he wanted to see. As the Savior passed that way, he looked up in the tree that day, and he said, Zacchaeus, come down from there, for I am going to your house today, for I am going to your house today. And Zacchaeus came down from the tree, and he said, what a better man I'll be. I'll give my money to the poor. What a better man I'll be. Zacchaeus was a wee little man, and a wee little man was he. But now he trusted in the Lord. What a happy man was he. Anybody know that? Yeah, okay, good. Awesome. So Jesus called this man Zacchaeus by name, as if to say that he knew all that he needed to know about Zacchaeus. And I can only imagine the shock on Zacchaeus' face, although we hear that he welcomed Jesus. But for him to hear Jesus say, I'm coming to your house today, Jesus was a, I mean, Zacchaeus was a chief tax collector and thereby an outcast, according to the established leaders. Chief tax collectors were known to slip others' money into their pockets. Zacchaeus was rich. He was physically small in stature. He humbled himself by climbing up a tree so that he could see Jesus. And the story leaders made assumptions about Zacchaeus. And they began to grumble when Jesus spoke to, directly to Zacchaeus and that said he has gone to be a guest of the one who is a sinner. Zacchaeus came down from the tree and stood tall, committing himself to give to the poor and to pay back four times the amount he may have fraudulently taken from others. So Zacchaeus repented and was willing to change his ways. And Jesus declares... Zacchaeus, a child of Abraham, just like those who grumble about him. The wee little man must have smiled beyond understanding. We know with many of the stories that Jesus ate with tax collectors. He didn't judge them. Rather, he told stories about others judging. And we just last week had the parable of Jesus with the Pharisee and the tax collector. You probably remember this well. The Pharisee gave thanks to God. I thank you that I am not like other people. And then he goes on to list the different categories of people, ending it with like a tax collector. And there was a tax collector standing there who didn't even look up to heaven and offered what he could do. He was beating his breast and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner just after having heard the Pharisee pontificate about all the things he was doing. So I really wonder why we as human beings are so quick to judge or to make assumptions about the other, no matter who the other is. We don't really know anything about the other and are yet so quick to assume. I believe we're called to know one another, to know one another well to sit with the other person to, or to walk with them, to listen to them, to engage them, to be in conversation with them. It's only in those kinds of ways that we reach out to one another that we really get to know the person and the differences we assume about the other begin to fade away as we make time to get to know them. Past couple of days, I was at Camp Washington with our Racial Healing, Justice, and Reconciliation Ministry Network Group. We have a core team of folks that plan the activities for our network. And we wrestled with our own, there are, about, there are 12 of us, we wrestled with our own team dynamics and how we can commit to truth-telling in all aspects of our work together. 
As we planned for 2023, we reflected on how important and lifelong the work is that we are trying to do in ECCT. Racism still infects our world and our common life together. Some of the challenges of our work come from assumptions that people make about the other and the risks that truth-telling can bring. Other challenges of our work stem from assumptions that some make about why we're even doing this racial healing work anyway, that racism has already been taken care of and is not an issue any longer. There are a number of people feel that way. So assumptions, I think, assumptions can hurt individuals and build walls between people. We don't really know why Zacchaeus climbed that sycamore tree, whether it was out of curiosity or admiration or just because he could, had the physical strength to climb that tree or because he wanted to get the best seat in the house. Can you imagine Jesus inviting himself to stay in your home with that invitation as a notion of our need to be prepared? And I wonder, are you ready for Jesus to come and stay in your home? Zacchaeus, we heard, welcome Jesus. I'm not so sure if I got that last minute notice if I would welcome Jesus because my house is not always the way I would want it to be for a guest, especially if that guest were Jesus. I've been watching a, a series called The Good Doctor. Did any of you watch it or see it? Okay, a few. I've been uh, drawn to medical shows for uh, a long time. Uh, I grew up with an aunt and uncle, and my uncle was a doctor, so he used to take me on rounds to the hospital. You could do it in, in those days. And this is a story about a young man, a young surgical resident named Sean Murphy, who's brilliant. And he's also autistic, very much, very deeply on the autistic spectrum. He struggles mightily to be accepted as a competent doctor because of his interactions and interpersonal skills are just very different from those around him. He has a longtime mentor that he's had since he was a child who went out on a limb to get him hired at the fictional San Jose St. Bonaventure Hospital. Much to the challenge of the hospital's board, the board had to really be talked into this. Harsh assumptions were made about Sean because of his autism. Sean's filters are very, very thin. It's much like a child. He says whatever he wants to say, it just comes right out of his mouth. And it's, it's usually very good because it's surgical and medical knowledge that people need to hear and sometimes needs to be softened a little bit. But his filters, he really doesn't have very much in the way of filters. He speaks his truth. And he encounters a young woman named Leah in the same apartment complex where he lived. And she, she reaches out to accept him. They, they banter back and forth and have an interesting level of conversation, but she really accepts him for who he is. And she made all kinds of attempts to understand him better. And they eventually fall in love. So it's a really sweet story. If you haven't seen it, it's still an active show. I'm, I'm in the series of, of behind watching because I didn't watch it from the beginning. But he has these wonderful eventually has these wonderful relationships with his co-workers who come to know him really well through conversation and being on the job with him. And I think Sean and this whole show has a lot to teach us about our need to let assumptions not be part of our being. It's only when people make the effort to get to know Sean that people see him as a gifted human being and not just as an autistic young man. So I think we all have a lot of work to do in that, in terms of getting to know each other. I love this little story of Zacchaeus. I believe Zacchaeus calls us into deeper relationship with Jesus, who doesn't judge, and into a deeper relationship with all those around us. We're called to get to know one another without being judgmental and without making assumptions about the other, no matter who the other is. We're called to deepen our relationships with those around us and to be open to knowing more 
about each other. Maybe then some of the walls will break down between us. And who knows when Jesus might call your name and say, I'm coming to your home today. Will you be ready? Advent's not too far down the road, so be thinking about what would it take for you to be ready for Jesus to come into your home. Let us pray. Lord of the excluded, open my ears to those I would prefer not to hear. Open my life to those I would prefer not to know. Open my heart to those I would prefer not to love. And so open my eyes to see where I exclude you. Amen. Now let us stand and affirm our faith with the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, Light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, the one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, with Father and the Son, who is worshipped and glorified, he has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please turn with me to prayer book page 392 for this morning's prayers of the people. We will be following form six. In peace we pray to you, Lord God, for all people in their daily life and work, for our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone, for this community, the nation and the world, for all who work for justice, freedom, and peace. Remembering our call to be good stewards of all that you place in our care, we pray for the just and proper use of your creation, for the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression. Remembering those who are vulnerable and defenseless, let us pray for all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For, for those, those who minister, who minister to the sick, the, sick, the friendless, friendless, and the needy. In our cycles of prayer, we pray for the 238th Annual Convention of the Episcopal Church in Connecticut, meeting November 4th through 5th in Hartford, Connecticut. 
We pray for the Anglican Church of Chile as we pray for the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth. For our presiding Bishop Michael, our bishops Jeffrey and Laura, Reverend Linda, and all bishops and other ministers. For all who serve God in his church. For all victims of violence, for all who are contending with the COVID-19 disease, and for all facing financial hardship. For Cynthia D., Russ, and Joan, and for the special needs and concerns of this congregation. Pray for our children as they are about Halloween tonight and tomorrow. Let us also pray for Megan, Paul Pelosi, Bill, Jean, Rachel, Xander, Patty, Dolores, Paul, Mike, Kevin, Amanda, Clarice, Claire, Mary, AJ, Tommy, Patrick, Frank, and Reed. Hear us, Lord. For your mercy is great. We will exalt you, O God, our King, and, and praise, praise your, your name, name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died, especially William Mozzie, Carl and Joan Anderson, We also pray for David, Marge, Kathy, Jean, Blanche, and John Mansfield. Let your loving kindness be upon them who put their trust in you. Now let us all pray together for our search process. Dear Lord, in this season of change, we pray for our parish of Christ Church and our vestry. Guide us that we may be patient in our discernment, steadfast in our commitment, and imaginative about our future. We look to your wisdom and companionship in our journey to find a rector who will enlighten and inspire us through preaching who will engage us through teaching, who will encourage us to serve others, and who will motivate us to celebrate the gospel in word and deed. All this we ask so that we may all come to know the love of Christ more deeply. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Greet your neighbors safely. Good morning. My name's Sandy Beatty, if you don't know me, I'm on Vestry, and we're here this morning. I would like to, first of all, <clears throat> thank Reverend Spires for coming here to be part of our journey. And um, she's had a long drive with ice on windshields and <laughs> all like the rest of us. So thank you very much, Linda. 
Uh, the Finance Committee would like to let you know that the third quarter pledge statements will be sent out this week. I would like to speak about the All Saints service. If you would like for us to remember a loved one or a friend who died in the past year, please send the name to Donald Taffel or Susan Leonard this week so that we may remember that person during our All Saints service, November 6. Um, we, uh, <clears throat> I'm a little lost right now, but I'll catch up to you. <laughs> yep. The Guilford Food Bank could use any donations of food or anything else that you might want to do. Times are tough and they're in need, as they always are, but I think more this time of year, especially with the current financial situation in the world. Um, I would remind everybody <clears throat> of the Friday noon music meditation that Mark does. It's, uh, I haven't been myself. I, would, I hope to get there one of these days, but it should be a very restful noontime half hour. And I'd like to invite everybody to come to our coffee hour. We are doing that. Uh, there's some muffins back there that I believe Susan made, as well as coffee, and as well as some holiday, some Halloween treats that the ECW has put together, and other little gift things that will be coming along for Christmas gifts. So I would invite everybody to come back to the parish hall afterwards and see what's out there and just have a moment together and enjoy our little fellowship. And I would like to invite Susan Tillier up. She has a message about the chili supper coming up December 2nd. Hello, good morning. My name is Susan Tillier. And in just over four weeks, Guilford will have their annual tree lighting ceremony. Christ Church, again, is active in this uh, event. And we're gonna have four different pillars this year. We have the ECW cookie sale. We have the youth resale. We have a Christmas marketplace. And I have the uh, challenge of filling a very large shoes of Jennifer Hubner and doing the chili supper. What I'm telling you today is to be on the lookout for Sign Up Genius because we need volunteers. We need from setting up to serving to ticket sales and just to be part of the Christ Church Fellowship. So Sign Up Genius will be coming and also next week there will be a Sign Up uh, uh, book in the back as well. So if you have any questions, please reach out to the admin and they can get in touch with me. And over the next four weeks, we'll be obviously reminding everybody of this exciting event coming up in December. Thank you. Thank you. I'd like to also mention that Catherine Frydenberg is going to be doing a uh, Alder Guild training session at 1115 today, if anybody is interested. Um, could always use more Alder Guild people. In fact, we can always use more people for everything. That's, <laughs> that's pretty much a given most of the time. Uh, now, Kate Higgins would like to give us a stewardship talk, and we're looking forward to that. Chris asked me to say a few words about that. Oh, okay, no, that's okay. We're all just making our, doing the best we can today. <laughs> Seems like things are not working quite right. But um, this, good morning. Um, so we're on the verge of, of stewardship. We're beginning our stewardship campaign. Uh, as Sandy said, the third quarter 
pledge statements are running a little late, but they'll be sent out this week. But uh, for the next uh, four weeks, we will be celebrating this church and looking for ways to share our wisdom, our work, and our wealth. And today, our first speaker is uh, Kate Hagens. And uh, Kate, come on up and thank you very much. In this historic town, Christ Episcopal Church is at the center of community, commerce, town government, a first-class free library, other churches, and the stunning green. This is part of what we all know and what we expect to continue to be, but not if we don't make it so. We must continue to keep this faith community vibrant with time and tithe, work, wisdom, wealth, especially in this transitional period. That's what you already know, what you don't know. is our personal story of how we came to be part of the Episcopal Church and eventually part of this church on the green. A few days before Christmas in 1985, in the Midwest where we had both grown up, we pried our two young children from the arms of their grandparents, their aunts and uncles and cousins and everyone and everything they had ever known. We loaded them into a car and began, with the dog, by the way, and began the long drive to our new home in Tucson, Arizona. We arrived at an empty house as we waited for the moving van to fill it up with familiar things. It was an interesting Christmas, and we truly were strangers in a strange land. Weeks later, marginally settled into new routines of school, job, or preschool, I began the search for something. Community, fellowship, anything beyond the four walls of our home. It was a bumpy and sometimes despairing ride, and I walked out of as many churches as I entered. One Sunday, I tried the funky little Episcopal Church at 6th and Wilmot. Julie knows. The entry to the parking lot was marked by a huge, garish, billboard-sized nighttime desert landscape painting of Mary and Joseph on their donkey. And the caption read, Jesus was a refugee. Well, perhaps this was a place that could teach our children about moral ambiguity. That little Episcopal church became our community. It was school and family and friends for our children and for us, and it's not too much to say that those people saved us. We owe the Episcopal Church, and so we are here. This place, in this historic town, on this incomparable green, it is not for us or you or even those who came before us. This place is for those young people in Sunday school, whether there are three or 37, or for the other folks who haven't even arrived yet. We 
owe them whatever we can give. Thank you. What, what an honor to be here at the beginning of your stewardship and to hear that inspiring talk, so thank you. Are there any among you today who have a birthday or an anniversary to celebrate? You know when I, I'm not seeing any hands go up? There might be someone at home that I'm not aware of, so I'm going to offer a prayer for birthdays and give thanks for those who are celebrating birthdays. Watch over your children, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall, and in their hearts may your peace, which passes understanding, abide all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now let us walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
blessings come of thee, O Lord. And of thy name, have a good day. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and grace. It is truly right and good and joyful to give you thanks, all holy God, source of life and fountain of mercy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. You have filled us in all creation with your blessing and fed us with your constant love. You have redeemed us in Jesus Christ and knit us into one body. Through your spirit, you replenish us and call us to a fullness of life. Therefore, joining with angels and archangels and with the faithful of every generation, we lift our voices with all creation as we sing. are you, gracious God, creator of the universe and giver of life. You formed us in your own image and called us to dwell in your infinite love. You gave the world into our care that we might be your faithful stewards and show forth your bountiful grace. But we fail to honor your image in one another and in ourselves. We would not see your goodness in the world around us. And so we violated your creation abused one another, and rejected your love. Yet you never ceased to care for us and prepared the way of salvation for all people. Through Abraham and Sarah, you called us into covenant with you. You delivered us from slavery and sustained us in the wilderness and raised up prophets to renew your promise of salvation. Then in the fullness of time, you sent your eternal word made mortal flesh in Jesus. Born into the human family and dwelling among us, he revealed your glory, giving himself freely to death on the cross. He triumphed over evil, opening the way of freedom and life. On the night before he died for us, our Savior, Jesus Christ, took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his friends and said, Take Eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this with a remembrance of me. The supper was ending. Jesus took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant which is poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith, Christ is God, Christ is risen, Christ is man. Remembering his death and resurrection, we now present to you from your creation this bread and this wine. By your Holy Spirit, may be for us the body and blood of our Savior Jesus Christ. 
Grant that we who share these gifts may be filled with the Holy Spirit and live as Christ's body in the world. Bring us into the everlasting heritage of your daughters and sons, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary and all your saints, past, present, and yet to come, we may praise your name forever, through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, to you be honor, glory, and praise forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we will both say, Our Father, who art in heaven, how we be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. We must to say our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. God or the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. And as we remember our folks at home, I offer the spiritual communion prayer for those not able to receive physically. Lord Jesus, I cannot now worship you at the altar of the church in the sacrament of your body and blood. Yet in spirit, I would join myself with all those who in your holy church offer you the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Visit me, I pray, with your mercy, pardon, and blessing, and fill me with faith and love and repentance. And so strengthen and sustain me by your grace, that I may with pure heart and mind follow you, the only God, now and forever. Amen. Amen.
together. Loving God, your Son is our peace, and his cross is sign of reconciliation. Help us to share the broken bread, to bring together the scattered, and to bind up the disunited, that Christ may bring the everlasting kingdom of the who is alive. The peace of God that passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of God's only Son, Jesus Christ. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you this day and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.